CDL Practice Test, California, General Knowledge, Part 17. Question number 402. Regarding fire safety, which of the following is the correct list of items you should check during your pre-trip? Inspection, A. Cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems, B. Fuel and fire extinguisher, C. Tires, cargo, fuel, steering wheel, electrical, exhaust systems, fire extinguisher, D. Tires, cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems, fire extinguisher. The correct answers here, D. Tires, cargo, fuel, electrical, exhaust systems, fire extinguisher. Explanation. Tires, cargo, fuel, the electrical system, and exhaust systems are all causes of fires. To avoid a fire, you should inspect them before the trip and ensure your fire extinguisher is charged. Question number 403. Which of these is a good driving rule for work zones? A. Use your four-way flashers or brake lights to warn drivers behind you. B. Slow down. C. Both of these answers are correct. The correct answers here. C. Both of these answers are correct. Explanation. In a work zone, drive slowly and carefully. Use your brake lights and four-way flashers to warn drivers behind you. Question number 405. On which fires can you use the ABC fire extinguisher? A. Electrical fires. B. Burning tires or cloth. C. Both of the above. The correct answer is here. C. Both of the above. Explanation. Be sure to use the right fire extinguisher to put out a fire. A class of fire involves ordinary combustibles such as wood, paper, cloth, or rubber. A class B fire involves flammable liquids such as gasoline, grease, or oil. A class C fire involves electrical equipment. A class D fire involves combustible metals such as magnesium or potassium. An A, B, C extinguisher can put out class A, class B, and class C fires. Question number 406. Whether or not you load or secure your cargo yourself, you are responsible for A. Knowing that your cargo is securely tied down and covered B. Recognizing overloads and poorly balanced weight C. Both two of the answers are correct. The correct answers here C. Both two the answers are correct. Explanation. Regardless of who loads and secures the cargo, you, the driver, are responsible for its safety. As part of your pre-trip inspection, make sure that the cargo is balanced, secured, and not overloaded, and does not get in the way of emergency equipment. The cargo's safety could be compromised otherwise. Question number 407. If a vehicle continues to drive in your blind spot you should A. Speed up B. Signal them to pass you C. Back off The correct answer is here C. Back off Explanation Backing off just means you slow down if the vehicle was in a blind spot this change in speed should force it out of the blind spot. Question number 408. You are testing the stopping action of service brakes on a hydraulic system. Which of these can mean there is a problem? A. 
The vehicle pulls to one side when the brake pedal is pressed. B. The brake pedal goes to the floor. C. Both of the above are correct. The correct answer is here. C. Both of the above are correct. Explanation. When testing the service brakes, check the following. Open bracket. 1. Whether the brake pedal holds up or sinks to the floor. Open bracket. 2. Whether the vehicle seems to pull to one side. Open bracket. 3. Whether it takes longer than it should to stop your vehicle. And. 4. Whether the brakes just feel strange. Based on your experience driving comparable CMVS, any of these signs could indicate a problem with the brake system that should be corrected before you drive the vehicle. Question number 409. Tie downs must be of the proper type and strength. According to federal regulations, the aggregate working load limit of the cargo tie downs must be enough to secure a three times the weight of the cargo tied down b twice the weight of the cargo tied down c one half times the weight of the cargo tied down the correct answer is here c one half times the weight of the cargo tied down explanation under federal regulations, the aggregate working load limit of the tie downs used to secure cargo must be at least one half times the weight of the cargo. Federal regulations also specify a formula to compute the aggregate working load limit of the tie downs from the working load limits of the individual tie downs. The working load limit of an individual tie down is defined as the maximum load that may be applied to it, as specified by its manufacturer. 49 CFR 393.106 49 CFR 393.5 Question number 410 You are driving a new truck with a manual transmission to take a long, steep downhill grade. A. Use the same gear you would use to climb the hill. B. Shift into neutral and coast. C. Use a lower gear than you would use to climb the hill. The correct answer is here. C. Use a lower gear than you would use to climb the hill. Explanation. With older trucks, you typically use the same gear for driving uphill and driving downhill. Today's trucks tend to have more powerful engines and be more efficient than older trucks. Hence, you can drive such a truck uphill in higher gears than you would use to drive downhill with engine braking. Question number 411. Which of the following may be a sign of tire failure? A. Vehicle thumping or vibrating. B. Vehicle fishtailing. C. Both of the above. The correct answer is here. C. Both of the above. Explanation. The classic sign of a tire blowout is a loud bang sound. However, if you're driving a long vehicle and a rear tire blows out, you may not hear the sound. In this situation, a thumping or heavy vibration may be the first sign you get that a rear tire has failed. Also, your vehicle may start to fishtail. On the other hand, heavy steering probably indicates that a front tire has failed. Question number 412. When is it recommended that you slow your speed by about half the normal amount? A. Your speed should be reduced by half when the roads are hot. B. Your speed should be reduced by half when driving on ice. C. Your speed should be reduced by half when driving in the rain. D. Your speed should be slowed by about half when driving on packed snow. The correct answer is here. 
D. Your speed should be slowed by about half when driving on packed snow. Explanation. Driving on packed snow can cause your vehicle to take much longer to slow down, and it is recommended that you reduce your speed by about half. On ice you should reduce speed to a crawl, and on a wet road you should reduce speed by about 1 stroke 3. Question number 413. Implied consent means that when you operate a CMV on public roads, you, A. Consent to have your vehicle inspected for alcohol, B. Consent to be tested for alcohol in your blood, C. Understand that you may now drink alcohol before driving. The correct answer is here. B. Consent to be tested for alcohol in your blood. Explanation. When you operate a CMV on public roads, you imply consent to be tested for blood alcohol concentration. Back. Upon the request of law enforcement, if you are convicted of refusing to be tested, you will lose your CDL for at least one year if this was your first offense. 49 CFR 391.15 Question number 415. One can recognize hazardous materials by looking at the containers. A. Shape. B. Label. C. Color. The correct answer is here. B. Label. Explanation. Federal regulations require shippers to warn drivers and others about the nature of the hazardous materials they are shipping. The shipper affixes us. Compliant hazmat labels to the packages and supplies the driver with the appropriate placards to attach to his or her vehicle. The shipper also notes the hazardous nature of the materials on the shipping papers. 49 CFR 172.400 49 CFR 172.407 Question number 416 How far ahead should you be looking while driving in town? A. 2 blocks B. 1 block C. As far ahead as you can see The correct answer is here. B. One block. Explanation. While driving, you should scan the road 12-15 seconds ahead. At speeds that are typical of urban areas, your vehicle will travel about one block in 12-15 seconds. At 60 miles per hour, your vehicle will travel a quarter of a mile in 15 seconds. Question number 417. Covering the brake means, A. Pushing the brake lightly and rapidly, B. Pushing on the brake just enough to make the brake lights to come on, C. To have your foot over the brake and ready to push it if necessary. The correct answer is here, C. To have your foot over the brake and ready to push it if necessary. Explanation. Covering the brake involves taking your right foot off the accelerator and holding it over the brake. Pedal your foot should hover over the pedal and not rest on it in any way. Question number 418. Which of these is true about the radiator shutters and the winter front? A. The winter front should be closed tightly. B. The engine may overheat if the winter front is left open. C. You should remove ice from the radiator shutters. The correct answer is here. C. You should remove ice from the radiator shutters. Explanation. In extremely cold weather. Very cold air flowing onto the radiator and through the engine compartment can prevent the engine from warming up and also keep your heater from working well. 
radiator shutters or a winterfront restrict this airflow to let the engine warm up. However, don't overdo it. Keep the winterfront partially open or keep the radiator shutters free from ice. If the shutters freeze shut or the winterfront is closed too tightly, the engine may overheat from lack of sufficient air. Question number 419. In your pre-trip inspection, you are checking your steering and exhaust systems. Which of these problems should be fixed before the vehicle is driven? A. Oil on the tie rod. B. White smoke from the exhaust pipe before the vehicle warms up. C. Steering play in excess of 10 degrees. The correct answer is here. C. Steering play in excess of 10 degrees. Explanation. If there is more than 10 degrees of play in your steering wheel, your vehicle will be harder to steer. Have the problem corrected before you drive the vehicle. In cold weather, white exhaust smoke that soon disappears may just be water vapor from condensation. However, if white smoke persists long after the vehicle has warmed up, have the condition checked. Question number 421. Underrated front axles can cause A. Poor traction. B. Unsafe steering. C. Both poor traction and unsafe steering. The correct answer is here. C. Both poor traction and unsafe steering. Explanation. Cargo must be loaded to keep the weight of the vehicle properly balanced. If there's not enough weight over the front axle, the front tires won't have enough traction for the vehicle to be steered safely. Question number 422. Which of the following may put a vehicle out of service? A. Spring hangers that do not allow movement of the axle from the proper position. B. Leaves in a multi-leaf spring that do not shift. C. Spring leaves with more than one stroke for missing or broken. The correct answer is here. C. Spring leaves with more than one stroke for missing or broken. Explanation. Although all of these issues need to be addressed. None of these findings would warrant taking the vehicle out of service, though any amount of missing or damaged spring leaves could be dangerous. If one stroke four or more are missing or broken, the vehicle should be taken out of service. Leaves in a multi-leaf spring should not shift, and spring hangers should not allow movement of the axle from the proper position. Question number 423. You are driving a heavy vehicle and must exit a highway using an off-ramp that curves downhill. You should A. Slow down to the posted speed limit for the off-ramp. B. Wait until you are in the curve before downshifting. C. Slow down to a safe speed before taking the curve. The correct answer is here. C. Slow down to a safe speed before taking the curve. Explanation. On curves, the posted speed may be safe for cars but not for CMVS, especially CMVS that are more prone to rollovers. Slow down to a safe speed before you enter the curve. Taking a curve too fast can cause a rollover. Breaking in a curve can cause a skid, or even a jackknife if you're pulling a trailer. Question number 424. What is the best hand position when driving? A. 2 o'clock and 7 o'clock. B. 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. C. Whatever feels most natural to the driver. D. 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. The correct answer is here. D. 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock. Explanation. 
although the old recommendation for hand placement was 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. AAA and other experts now recommend that hands be placed in the 3 o'clock and 9 o'clock positions. This is because the 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock positions put the hands directly in the path of air. Bag deployment should an accident occur, which may result in an injury.